realagriculture.com presents farming forward sharpen your soil health expertise with cover cropping nitrogen management and advanced grazing brought to you by the farm resilience mentorship program I'm Kelvin Hepner. On this episode, we're in a, a canola plot at Innovation Farms, just northwest of Winnipeg, talking about figuring out the right rate of nitrogen to put down with the crop. We're joined by Dr. Mario Tenuta. Mario is the Industrial Senior Research Chair for 4R Nutrient Stewardship at the University of Manitoba, focusing on things related to soil science, fertility, and greenhouse gas emissions from fertilizer. We talk about what it looks like, that process, and all the different variables that go into figuring out the right rate of nitrogen to use. All right, joined by Mario now, and Mario, we're talking about how to figure out that right rate of nitrogen. What kind of process, thought process, do you recommend farmers go through? Uh, That's a great question, Kelvin. It's um, uh, so important. Uh, Well, how do we approach it? Well, you can approach it a couple of ways. One is by targeting yield, uh, uh, maximum yield. Uh, But that's probably not going to be the best for profitability um, because we'd be targeting uh, the maximum yield, but probably putting a lot of dollars into getting that yield that may not pay off. So probably the best thing is targeting profitability. So maximize our profitability. And how do we do that? Well, simply we, we need to understand what is the response to nitrogen for our crop on our soils in different years in terms of we expect a wet, dry, normal year. And then what is the price of the nitrogen fertilizer? Those are the really key things. There's lots of tools out there to be able to um, determine um, the um, this balance between income from marketing of the crop. So we need to know the, the, the pricing of the crop and then how much we paid for the nitrogen and then um, be able to then figure out what's that optimal nitrogen rate for profitability. Yeah, and I guess it, it starts with also knowing what you have in the field in terms of uh, having a soil test and, and those results. For sure. So when we're looking at nitrogen responses, we always add what's in the soil plus what we add in terms of fertilizer. So it's actually more like total nitrogen in the field that's available to the plant, not just our fertilizer. So if we're coming in with 40, 50 pounds of nitrogen, we need to put that and add that to what the fertilizer is that we've added when we're looking at these responses. Okay. I'm going to set you up here, Mario. What's your response when uh, somebody says our plants, our crops are inefficient at taking up nitrogen fertilizer? It's only 40 to 60% of the fertilizer that we apply gets used by the crop. (laughs) Oh, you don't know how much that really bugs the hell out of me. Uh, Our crops are not inefficient. So you hear people say, you know, 30 to 60% of the nitrogen is taken up by our crops. Well, what people are really talking about is the nitrogen that is removed in the harvestable portions. And they're only considering the nitrogen that was applied in this year. So yeah, that's that's the removal, but a plant takes up more than just the removal. There's the roots, there's the stems, there's the leaf nitrogen. And when we start adding up the nitrogen and all those plant components, it's much more. Some years we're at 100%, okay? Mm. But the thing that uh, really um, I find uh, intriguing is that the fertilizer we added in previous years will go into the soil, into the microbial biomass and the bodies of microbes, and it's released the following year through mineralization. So that's fertilizer nitrogen that the plant is taking up, but in the next year. So we start taking that into account as well. Our crops are are really good for nitrogen uptake. If they weren't, then we'd be mining our soils for nitrogen. And, and that would mean that we would have to be losing organic matter. So if a farmer s- sees their organic matter levels staying um, flat, or actually increasing in some cases, then they know they're they're not mining for nitrogen, and they're probably having good nitrogen utilization efficiency. Okay, what about the the type of product that we use in terms of understanding uh, availability to the crop uh, in, in different types of products? That's also, I guess, part of this process of determining the right rate to use. 
Oh, for sure. For sure. So, you know, there's one thing about the crop and how much nitrogen it needs, but then there's also when does it need that nitrogen? So some crops are faster taking early on. Um, our cereals are like that, but then we have crops that uh, need the nitrogen later. Uh, than the cereals, for example, um, canola behind us. But then you have crops uh, such as corn or potato that are even later that they need um, um, a sustained nitrogen availability. So that makes a big difference in how we apply the nitrogen. And of course, it, it makes a big impact on the uh, losses. If we lose more, then obviously we have to then put more higher rates. So the idea what we want to do then is knowing those crops and then we can make decisions we can make decisions of when we apply the fertilizer so is it in fall is it at planting or can we put some in season and that depends on when the crop needs the nitrogen and the fall is dependent on uh, uh, farmer uh, labor availability working to be able to work the ground and so forth if you go in the fall you want to wait as late as possible to tell the ground is cool preferably lower than uh, 10 degrees centigrade, even lower than that, and it'll protect from um, loss with, with freezing, for example. And then we have uh, different forms in terms of products. Uh, we like to use uh, urea and um, uh, anhydrous ammonia, so these products need to undergo uh, nitrification. So it's not until really until they're in the nitrate form that they can be lost. So we want to minimize that time where the nitrogen shows up as nitrate and until the plant really starts taking up that nitrate. We call it loitering, or at least I call it loitering nitrate. We don't want nitrate to be loitering in soil without a crop taking it up. And we can control that again by the timing of the application. We can ban the fertilizer to slow down the nitrification. We can use enhanced efficiency fertilizers, like it's a controlled release, for example, polymer coated. Or we can use nitrification inhibitors to slow down that release to keep it more in the ammonium form. So when the crop is really taking up the nitrogen, it's then becoming available in the nitrate form. Yeah. Ultimately, it's about efficiency and nitrogen use efficiency, both from an economic perspective, but also increasingly from an environmental and emissions perspective. Right. Yes. So, you know, the we're increasingly thinking more about those losses and reducing them. Uh, losses of nitrogen for the pocketbook because it's 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 costly, but then also as a con contribution to to greenhouse gases. So you can see there's a bit of a transition right happening here. We're thinking about greenhouse gases and reducing them. We're even having programs that farmers can utilize, like the off-calf programs, to um, reduce the, the emissions and be compensated uh, partly for for the, the cost of the, the products, for example, that reduce the, the emissions. So, so we're having a, a, a bit of a, a change here in, in our approach to nitrogen management. It's just not about yield. You know, we, we want to talk about the profitability and then we also want to talk about uh, environmental benefit too. Yeah. Well, there's lots to think about both today and in the future when it comes to figuring out the, the right <laughs> rate. Thanks for your time, Mario. Thanks, Kelvin. If you enjoyed this video and want to continue to sharpen your soil health expertise, I encourage you to go to farmlearninghub.ca to learn more.